Happy Father's Day, all you dad hustlers out there. This is Will Crown for another episode of Dad Hustle. And today I'm in Texas. I'm actually away from my family. Uh, hello, Janaya, Rock, what's up? Miss you guys. I got to shoot on a film set yesterday and had the distinct privilege of meeting this guy, Mr. Major Dodge. What's going on, brother? What's up, brother? Hey, man. Thanks for having me. Thrilled to have you. And actually, I'm in his home, so he's really happy. <laughs> he is the epitome of a dad hustler. This guy is a multiple times actor and producer. I like that, dad hustler. Dad hustler. You know, the word hustle has uh, can have a negative connotation associated with it, but I, I don't think it is. I mean, it's just, you know, hustle to me. It's somebody that uh, is determined to make it at all costs and uh, won't let anything stop them. And I think that's, that's awesome. You know, I like it when you use it with the word dad because a dad has to set an example mm -hmm. of his hustle so that, you know, it carries on to the next generation. Didn't our screen move? It seems like it might. I think have. it did. Here, yeah. let me. We're on. Yeah, there we go. Let's try that. There we go. We'll think we'll say there. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's yeah. good. Thank you for moving that screen, too. <laughs> if the screen tilts. Don't worry, Major's gonna take care of it. It's on a yeah, we're on a little podium stand here, so yeah, no, that's right. right. Goes back to what you were saying. It's not a 50-50 deal. I'm a hundred percent family, and I think you'd agree. You know, I, I got to meet and work with this kid yesterday. Amazing kid, but we're also a hundred percent about our passion and making sure that we're pursuing what we love. So I think that's the key to, to success in life. You know, is to uh, you know pursue what you love. Money and success is a byproduct of doing what you love. I feel that's like good. so so often in life, people. Um, they're doing something just for you know a paycheck, yeah. or just to pay the bills, or you know, or they, they you know they have the mantra in their head, I O I O I O, so off to work I go. So I've never I've never really lived that way. Even when I lived in New York, like, I always supported my acting habit through sales jobs. Gotcha. I actually had one of these offices where we we sold these coupons and we I'd, I'd motivate the troops and we do like a little chant and get on really? the board. Oh yeah. Chris Pratt had one like mine too, and it was hilarious because he was on Conan O'Brien not that long ago, and he was he was talking Talk about, about his, his uh, yeah we we sold these gift certificates, these little coupons. But that was fun, and that's why I say that. And usually, as an actor, when you first get out to New York or LA or wherever you're starting, yeah, you have to have a job to uh, can sustain the job yourself. You, yeah, just sustain yourself and yeah. do the job you want to do. I was telling you before before we got on camera, I've always been kind of a, a, a jokester. My sixth grade teacher. Um, Mr. Herbert says we're going to do a play and sell tickets to the show. And so he's going around and he's giving out parts. And he goes, Dodge, you're going to be the lead. And I stood up and I go, what are I going to be the lead for? I thought I was in trouble, you know, because I was always in trouble for something. Right. And he said, because you're the class clown and you got a big mouth. So I know everyone will be able to hear you on stage. Wow, Dodge. that's how you started in acting. Yeah. And, yeah, and so when I got this to New York great. doing theater, you know, you have the little bio and the playbill for like Off-Broadway and Broadway right. and stuff. Right. I'd always put that in my bio. And give Mr. Herbert a shout out. I don't even. I need to look him up. Yeah, you do. He doesn't have a Facebook. I did try to find him on Facebook. I even looked, tried to find him on MySpace. I don't think. Yeah, MySpace. He's, he's oh, probably. Wow. Um, you went way back. I know. I took it way back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me a little bit about your family. One son, or you got? Yeah, one son. Okay, okay. One son. I, I knew I had met one, so I didn't know if there were yep. more. No, um, not tell that me, I know of. Tell me, yeah, <laughs> better not be right. <laughs> so I'm actually a single dad. Okay. Um, I, I've been uh, a single dad since my son was uh, six months old. Wow. And uh, he's eight and a half now, an actor as well, and is a wrestler. The little boys always want to be like their dads. It's funny, wrestling. Did you wrestle all through school? Because I wrestled too, and uh, I find, tell me if this is true for you, a lot of the work ethic that I have now for my dad hustle, for the thing that I'm actually pursuing, uh, and about being a great dad, is it really comes from what I learned in sports. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Big time? Uh, big time. Um, because wrestling, it's the hardest sport that I ever did growing up. And yeah, uh, you know, it teaches you uh, work ethic, and, and it teaches you how to overcome adversity. So it really gives you uh, the mindset, and that's ultimately what it is, you know, the mindset. And so, it's, it's you and them, I find. Like, there's nobody else to, to blame it right. on if it doesn't go right. well, if you don't get your hand raised at the yeah. end of the match. It was it was all on you. Yeah. So No one to blame but yourself. Definitely teaches you that life lesson, too. Yeah. yeah. Take ownership of whatever you're doing. So That's true. Oh, that's awesome, man. So your your son is in acting. How long has he been acting? And, and was it seeing you that really got that sparked in him? Or well, you know, so I can't take all the credit. His mom is actually uh, an actor uh, and singer as oh, well. Okay, and cool. her whole family are in the arts. Her so mom, artistic and, genes throughout. Yeah, uh, on her side of the family. And my, my family, I've got a cousin that has a band. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, athletes and blue collar. Well, you've definitely got a, a pretty strong dose of it. So this guy... Yes, he was the father on set yesterday for his son, who is also major. Is that yeah? Does that make you he, like he's he's Major Nelson Dodge the fourth? You're the third. Yes, I'm the third. That's crazy. That's awesome. Okay, yeah. cool, dope. Uh, so for, I stopped at three though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've told him a uh, hundred times already. You do not have to <laughs> do a fifth. Kid, the fifth. I think five's too many. Yeah, maybe. Uh, if you're watching this and you're the fifth, I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> um, 
But uh, yeah, so uh, my dad and grandpa aren't actors, so I'm just Major Dodge for acting. And so rather gotcha. than calling him Major Dodge the Fourth, when yeah. I didn't think it'd make sense, so for acting, he's going by Major Dodge Junior. Yeah. Hey, so, that's awesome. Yeah. It's gonna be like Robert Downey. <laughs> so major, major, and then you got minor, major, who's who's actually reading lines right now and studying for uh, a potential yeah, he's upcoming got an, film. He's got an audition. Kind of a big uh, deal. Studying for an audition right now in the other room for. Uh, film called Greenland with uh, Chris Evans so I was like I mean tell a kid he gets to audition for a movie opposite of Captain America I mean, <laughs> pretty, how's he not gonna study I, w- I got a romance <laughs> on him so I'm not gonna lie I'd be pretty psyched myself it's funny that that whole thing with the apple and the tree is not um, it's it's not apple doesn't fall fall, fall far from, from the tree, tree. Right. Um, because he'll get he, he, he'll get the same uh, marks and comments in school one of my brightest students straight A's but loves to talk to talk his to neighbor him. and you know you sit there and you're like oh, you wanna get mad at your kid but you're like crap those are the exact same things they said about right. me. And look, I turned out okay. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and all those things really uh, play to being a better actor, the career that he's going oh, yeah. to, for Absolutely. sure. you got to be comfortable in your own skin. I talk about that often on this show. But let's talk about your career for a little bit. Sure. Let's go on IMDb. Look this guy up, Major Dodge. He's got some 42 acting credits. He's got seven producing credits. But his major producing credit is the film that he actually owns right there. Yeah. Bomb City. Bomb City. And I, I watched this film, and dude, I was I was blown away. Thank you. Thank Absolutely you. blown away. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, this film is actually the 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 child of uh, myself, Jameson Brooks, and Sheldon Chick. Um, the three of us, we built the the film pretty much from the ground up. It's a true story. Unfortunately, it's based on a true story. Uh, Jamie yeah. uh, co-wrote the script with Sheldon and uh, directed it and edited it. I produced it. I cast it. Act in it as well. My entire life, people try to rattle my cage, to force me to explode from the inside out, testing me, trying to find my breaking point. My mother would say, son, step in from the cold, and my father just the same. He'd say, don't ever lose your self-control. But I opened the window. I let the cold air flow. I lost my self-control. Watching the actors, I mean, and for somebody that studies the, the art, obviously, and loves it, is passionate about it, these guys, it was like I was in the story with them the whole time. It That's drew awesome. me in. I mean, the main guy that played, I think it was Brian? Dave Davis. Dave Davis, yeah. amazing, phenomenal actor. Check him out in anything he's in. Yeah. But I was blown away. Everybody was like a 10 on Rotten Tomatoes. For those of you who don't know, that's where you go to find out the real skinny on a movie, if it's good or not. And it scored a whopping 88%, right? Yeah, yeah. That's huge. With dude. critics, yeah. We're humbled. But you know, it's funny. People are like, oh my gosh, it's so amazing. And I'm like, you know, not to sound conceited, but so as a man think it is he. This is what I expected. I'm, yeah. I'm sorry. I, I, you know, awesome. I, tell, I tell people, I'm like, you knew it was. Well, I, go you, you don't. You don't put your blood, sweat, and tears, and soul, and and hard work, and and love, and passion into something, and not expect it to pay off like this. Right. So people ask me often. They're like, Oh my gosh, you're surprised at how good it's in. I'm, no, I'm not. I expected it to do well. Wow. You know. Um, wow. Because you, you were envisioning it like the whole time. You you saw this coming. You yes. knew what you were creating. Yes. Yes. And so you it wasn't can see a it shock. in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. And yeah. you were talking to, to take it back to what we talked about with wrestling. You know, I used to lay in the bed the yeah. bed at night before the Saturday morning wrestling matches and I'd wrestle all my matches in my mind. Yeah. And I'd see my every with every situation, with every outcome, I'd see my hand being raised. Yeah. And then when I got up on Saturday morning and wrestled whoever the opponent was, whatever, I, you know, I'd already wrestled that match so many times and in my mind I already won it so yeah. many times. It just naturally so it, came it, it just it just, you know, it helped me become even more successful. Bomb City is the first feature I've been, you know, the producer producer on you know you also on. acted in as well I did yeah I played great. A, a very uh, uh, <laughs> bad guy in that film my, my character's yeah. not very nice right yeah I was, I was like <laughs> what that I'm going to interview that guy uh, yeah but it's, no it's cool because I'll get booed and then, then I tell people I produce it and then they all love me so it's like oh if you made the movie you're not <laughs> you no, can't be that bad because yeah, you, yeah, you yeah, support exactly. yeah. <laughs> what all goes into actually making an independent film of this size you know, when, when you're doing something based on a true story you have to get a life rights like the last thing you want to do is make a movie and you know Get sued, you right? Know, especially when you're first time indie filmmaker. I always try to stay away from being sued. Yeah, it's a, it's a good idea. Yeah, it's a good. That would not be a good dad hustle. No. What about like funding? The movie doesn't get made without the money, and that was actually uh, yeah. that's funny you should ask. That was one of the responsibilities that fell um, solely on my shoulders. Oh, really? Um, yeah, I mean willingly. You know, I come okay. from I come from a sales background as I, as I mentioned earlier, and yeah. uh, 
Uh, you know, the first thing I did was I went out to Home Depot and I bought a ginormous dry erase board mm -hmm. and I put that in my room and I wrote Bomb City with the marker at the top. And no then, way. Yeah. And then uh, Jamie, um, started, <laughs> Jamie awesome. had put together, um, you know, a little um, a lookbook that had, um, you know, uh, some images mm -hmm. that uh, sh showed, you know, that he had a really clear vision on how he wanted the film to look. Gotcha. So it had it, it really, the hair and all. Well, the, just the look different. and style of the film, the, the lighting, the, yeah. the, the the you know the the shots, the, the, the you know the types of uh, actors we wanted for the roles and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So it made it really uh, easy for people to understand. So it was an asset that I could use if I was going to an investor meeting or a pitch meeting. But uh, you know, I put put those on my wall too because um, in life there are a lot of distractions. Yeah. And so um, you know, having a vision board. Um, enabled me to have a constant reminder when I woke up in the morning of what it was nice. that I wanted most. We already knew what, what we needed to raise to make the movie. And, uh, you know, the first thing I did was I just wrote down every name of any person I'd ever met in my life that I thought had money. <laughs> gotcha. that's, how I, that's how I started. Like, I'm going yeah. to see Uncle Thomas. Yeah, well, people are like, how, who did, how'd you get the money? I'm like, well, anywhere and everywhere I went, I talked about it. Yeah, and if I anyone got any it's passion, interest, man, yeah, you know, and you just believe. When I met Mike Dennecke, you know, I could see the pain behind his eyes, like it happened yesterday. And then it was about one dad talking to another dad. I gave him my word that we were going to tell his son's story. Yeah, and it was about that human connection and being a dad, and 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 knowing how much I love my son and knowing that he lost his. Um, you know, I, I just it's unfathomable. He's a very, very strong individual, loving, kind, sweet individual. Sometimes you don't know what the, what the juice tastes like till the fruit gets squeezed. I, I don't know if I would still stay that sweet as him and Betty had, having had that happen to me. You know, I just don't know. But he did, and this story celebrates the legacy of his son. So he's been very, they've been very supportive throughout the whole process. How do they feel so now that it's done? Are they they're pleased with the final result? Very pleased. Oh, yeah. Sure. Betty, uh, that's Brian's mom. Yeah. Somebody asked her, "What did you think about the movie?" She said, "I felt like I got to spend uh, another hour and a half." with my son oh, and so from that point on you know I mean it was nice to get wow. it was nice to get the good reviews and variety and the Hollywood Report and all that but that's what Bet Betty Denicky's review is the best but you know so anytime I'd go into an investor meeting or whatever I'd, I'd just remind myself you know of the conversation with Mike and you just have to believe and once the first money's in mm -hmm. the, the rest of it that puts the train on the tracks call it Emily money E-M-I-L-Y early money is like yeast because it grows Wow. And so, um, you wow, know, that's good. Once that happens, man, you just, you just know that, you know, it, it, I can't stress enough. It's, it's, it's vision. It's, it's vision. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hand. Yeah. So as a man, think it to see. If you, uh, um, you like the Bible, that's Proverbs 23, seven. That's one of my favorite verses, man. If it's something that lights you up inside and, and, and you're passionate about it, mm -hmm. that's usually a good sign that that's what you're supposed to do. You're going to go all the way. That you're going to go all the way, man. Yeah. You feel that because you need that. And, and you need that uh, You need that passion. And once it's happening, you need that passion. Because on those 18-hour days when you're the last one to go home and the sun's coming up and you feel like a vampire, you remind yourself of what you're... You have to remind yourself of... Why am I doing this? That you're living your dream. And yeah. so many people out in this Dude. world are miserable because they're not living their dreams. This is blowing so me you right. have to live your dream. You have to live your best life now and nothing can stop you and nothing can get in your way if you truly make up in your mind that's what you're going to do and you, you, your mind is the most powerful tool you have I mean the only person on a daily basis that you're ever in any kind of conflict with the only person that can ever really bring you down is the yep. one that lives between the left and the right ear that's exactly so right so you have to take every thought captive and make it obedient to what it is that you're pursuing and what it is that you want because things will serve as distractions. And that's why I needed that white dry erase board. Because it was a constant reminder. See it in front of you every single day. A constant reminder day. every day of what I wanted most. This and and that speeds up the manifestation. It yeah. speeds it up when you commit things to paper. And, 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 you, yeah. um, you know, and you've got lookbooks. And you've got things on the wall. And you've got things on your mirror. Whatever. It speeds up the process. And there are going to be setbacks and pitfalls. Whatever. That's to be expected. But it's about how you overcome that. And, and in spite of. In the face of those ad adversities. How do I keep pressing forward and making it happen anyway? And once you make up your mind that that is going to be the outcome then the little stuff whatever doesn't bother you so much yeah. and you have to celebrate the small victories too that mm -hmm. was another thing i gave myself small goals as i was going throughout the, the uh, money raising process small goals for different dates i'll have this by this and I'll, I'll accomplish this so you hit a goal and then you like how would you celebrate that small victory just <laughs> whatever go out to dinner with your friends go out yeah and, you know and uh some, have a night out and movie have, night with the kids or whatever yeah, eat yeah. some wings and drink a beer whatever yeah, yeah. Uh, whatever it is but be excited about it. Celebrate it. Be That's happy good, about man. your accomplishment. Because That's what good. happens is enthusiasm is contagious. You know, and that when I used to sell those gift certificates I was telling you about in New, in, in New York, yeah. but like uh, Chris Price, I'd always tell people, don't go take a break, a coffee break, or eat something after you after you make a sell. Go talk to the very next person you see. Because what happens is when you close a deal, 
that enthusiasm carries over to the next person and people want that people are buying that yeah that enthusiasm I had one person out of eleven of my investors, one that read the script. One, the other ten, the other ten gave me money just off of your enthusiasm and the story. Obviously, yeah, clearly, you got to have a good story if you want to make a movie, and you have to be good at telling your story. Be to a good other storyteller. That's cool. um, and that's where it all starts. If you have a good story, you're going to get great actors. You know, um, actors want good parts; they want good stories. Yeah. And 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 uh, and and, yeah. and investors want to invest in, in good stories. That is so much of the dad hustle. Grit comes with the work. That's the, the hustle. And there's no excuse for it. I mean, let's say, okay, when you say major, where I don't have any sales ability. Improvise. Yeah. And so that's all it is. It's pursuing an objective. And so I'm like, if you're an actor, you, you know how on a very basic level, you know how to close a sale because you know how to pursue an objective. You're reading, observing, listening. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't give the same presentation to every person. I'd find out what it was about that person. Or their hot them. buttons. and Yes. Yeah. How can you market this to them? And uh, ultimately, you know, figure out, you know, uh, what it is that would make them get interest uh, in your story. So awesome. Um, but then again, if you still say, well, Major, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it. Well, then go make a movie on your iPhone. Because everyone's walking around with a 4K camera in their pocket. And there's no excuse. If you want to tell your story, you want to make your movie right there go make it yep movie shot on this or getting into Sundance right now I want to ask so many questions because I watched it yesterday it's all I could think of this morning it was just playing throughout my That's head awesome, but I was like I gotta be careful not to like give away spoilers because you have to go see this film it's bone chilling like what what actually happens it's a true story those are the type of films that I think we all want to be a part of I mean yeah. I, you know I, I got into films because I wanted to uh, tell stories that mattered Make and a difference that, that affected people and yeah. um, you know made people feel stuff, not just you know movies where you can you know eat popcorn and watch buildings blow up. I mean, I like those movies too. Don't get me wrong, but sure. um, uh, the ones I like the most are the ones where you, I leave and you know an hour later I'm still thinking about it, you know, in the car and going down the road and yeah. having conversations with my friends about it. And um, so, um, I think the true beauty of art is is that when you can take something bad and and, and turn it into uh, something positive. Well, if that was your goal, mission accomplished, brother. Check it out. It's it's everywhere. Amazon, iTunes, yeah, yeah. Uh, Vimeo. Yep, yeah. and you get uh, DVD and Blu-ray. We also have cool merchandise at bombcitymerch.com. Got it. Um, but uh, yeah, DVD, Blu-ray, streaming everywhere. Um, you know, and there's a full list of platforms on bombcityfilm.com. What's next on the horizon for you? We're just now starting to you know refill our creative cups, okay. if you will, because uh, when you do an indie film, your job's not done just because you get distribution. No. So we've had to <laughs> no. you know recut trailers, uh, put out you know other content, B BTS videos, um, you know run the social media. Um, you know we've been busy getting the merchandise out, which is out now. We've got a soundtrack, uh, the soundtrack being released through Sumerian Records uh, yeah. in the next couple weeks. Then we're releasing our score as well. Nice and. Uh, yeah, it's just, you know, the work's, the work's never over. But I, I have um, uh, an MMA film that I'm developing right now. Really? Uh, tentatively titled Rear Naked Choke, which is a, yeah, which which is is a mission hold. Yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a drama, a gritty MMA drama. That, uh, it's, it's, uh, That's awesome. Kind of like yeah. warrior-esque? Yeah, it's, it's about a guy at 40 years old who tries to become a professional cage fighter for the first time. Oh, okay. Yeah, so Sounds like, like me. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the boom. Right? It's, like, it's right. like the dramatic version of Here Comes the Boom. <laughs> Good old Kevin Jeff, right? <laughs> yeah. That's exactly. awesome. So, it sounds yeah, good. I just I wanted to combine you know two things that I love because I love I love wrestling and I love MMA. Yeah, me um, too. You know, but Robbie Lawler was my cop partner in Bomb City. Ruthless Robbie Lawler. No, ball, I didn't realize that. Yeah, he's a UFC fighter. And, uh, oh, that's awesome. One of my favorite fighters. Um, which is and now he's my friend. How did you happen cool. to cast him? Just uh, believe it or not, we were at a NCAA uh, wrestling championships in New York City in uh, Madison Square Garden. So we had the suite, and Robbie walked in. I was like, "Oh man, it's Robbie Lawler," and we just started talking about college wrestling. And you know, like attracts like. When you got think, stuff like that to talk about, I, right. that's how the pe people bond, and I think yeah. friendships start. You both love wrestling and and uh, punch people in the face. Yeah, uh, there's common you know, ground. There's common ground. Yeah, like common attracts down. like. It's, it's amazing because I just met this guy yesterday and we're already quickly becoming good friends. I wouldn't be surprised if we work together in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Man. Yeah. And, and, you're, and you're a believer, which is really cool yep. too, man. There's, right. uh, I, I love uh, work, uh, believers because uh, 
It's cool. You uh, immediately you know what the content of the character is. Let's talk a little bit about your coaching career. You, you have oh, it. yeah. Well, so, yeah. So, it's awesome. I, I, I coach uh, the Rockwell Heath Elite Youth Wrestling Team in Rockwell, Texas. And them. they're bad to the bone, okay? <laughs> I saw a video. Yeah, I saw I, a tape. I like video. <laughs> kind of when I got out of wrestling in college, you know, I was kind of burnt out on it. I used to cut a lot of weight, and I was just, you know, like yeah. every wrestler, you know, I'm done with this. And, and then you have a kid, and everything changes. It's yeah. like, I want my kid to wrestle. I heard that there was a team uh, locally here and walked in to sign my kid up and uh, the coach says, uh, well, if any of you dads have any wrestling experience, put it on your kid's form. And I was like, all right. Gotcha. How many, I was like, I'm, how many other dads are going to put down that they wrestled in college and scholarship and was on the Indiana national team? Right, right, right. So I wrote that down and kind of like deal. an hour later my phone rang and I was like, all right, well, uh, it's kind of a big choice. Let me pray about it. And I just, I was like, yeah. Got to do it. We just finished our third season. Uh, Major's going to be in third grade next year. And it's awesome. This past year, he, got, he placed fifth in state Dude, for his age and weight. Did that's really amazing. I, like yeah. I said, I saw some some video footage of, of his kid wrestling, and Major is no joke. He's Major. <laughs> I coached wrestling years ago, junior high wrestling. It takes up a lot of time. So how does that play yeah. alongside with like what you're passionate about? Like <sighs> That balance there, that's yeah. always the quandary. Like, yeah. What do we do? Well, luckily, there's there's something called assistant coaches, um, yeah. <laughs> and so um, okay. see, I didn't have one of those. I have probably two or three, nice. uh, two that are like you know kind of full time assistant coaches. Awesome. But everyone just does it because they love wrestling and they love the kids. And most of the most of the people that are involved with the program, it's because they have kids that are wrestling. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I don't know that I would be the head coach if my son decided he didn't want to wrestle anymore. I don't know if I would right. have as much passion just only coaching other people's kids. Although I love it. Um, you know, I'm really there. I'm really there. Like any because dad, kid. Be, cause, sure. yeah, because I want to, you know, coach coach my son's team. So when it's wrestling season, you know, I just kind of I'm more picky about what I choose, and they couldn't change the dates. And I was like, I can't do it. It's the state. Yeah, yeah. And you so, can't you can't miss that. Yeah, that's so the culmination. I only had to turn down one TV job in uh, three years of coaching the team. But you so, know what? That's awesome because that shows that no matter what your priorities are still right as much as this is dad hustle we always want to stress that you know families first i believe we're setting an example for our kids that everything i do even you know this weekend where i'm away and i'm working my kids see the dedication that i have but at the same time if they got something going on that i know it's the right thing for me to be at i need to be there you know that's priority number one so absolutely absolutely so good man and you always be you'll be rewarded for it in the end you know it'll it'll, it'll comes back around Oh yeah, you're planting seeds, man. You're yeah. Planting seeds, watering yeah. seeds. The, that's the greatest accomplishment you can have is fatherhood. I mean, you know, it's mm-hmm. nice to you know accolades and you know do, right, do right. good in your job or acting or in, in whatever. Sure. It All is. that it's feels like, good, but man, the ultimate what lasts. Like, yeah. The best words I've ever heard is at the end of the night when my kid looks at me at bedtime and says, "I love you, daddy." Yeah. I mean, there's nothing better than that. It's awesome. An Oscar can't compare to that. To I love you, daddy. That's right, man. Yeah, I really appreciate this time. Is it cool by chance if we could? Neat little major. Oh sure, yeah. We can, we can if he's got, he, yeah, you just bring him in, just as he is. <laughs> we'll totally him in. cool. Cool. You just I'll, call him in. I'll grab him. All right, bro. Um, hey, my name is Major Dodge. I'm eight years old. And I've been acting since I was three, and I've been acting five years now. Five years now. Yeah. How do you like acting? Um, it's quite good. Yeah, it's quite yeah, good. It's quite good. That's awesome, man. Yeah. He's an amazing actor. Actually, yesterday. You and I had a scene together, and I had to kind of rough you up a little bit, huh? <laughs> he was fighting me, too. This guy's strong. I didn't know he was a wrestler. He was about to throw me down in a hold, so that's awesome. You did a good job. Are you excited about your uh, role that you're reading for right um, now, Major? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to be in a Captain America movie if he I get this. this. Of a hundred thousand dollars. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the thanks for seeing me. Right, bribe him. Bribe him. Go bribe him. Uh, Book this, and you're in a movie with Captain America. Going to change our life. <laughs> <laughs> Captain America, man. Yeah. Just keep thinking, Captain America. $100,000. You could be a sidekick someday, so. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I'm probably not recognized this. Yeah. I'm never going to be a superhero, probably. You never know. A real one or in a movie? Oh, uh, in a movie. You probably won't be a real one, but you might be in a movie. You might day. be in a movie. Yeah. yeah. Maybe in a movie, movie if I do this when I'm a kid, once I'm grown up, probably. Make one she grew up and then just put it on a movie. Yeah. Hey, is there anything you want to say to your dad for Father's Day? Um, thank you so much. You created me and you've done everything in my life. Thank you. And happy Father's Day, by the way. So happy uh, Father's uh, Day. Where can they yeah. find you? My Instagram handles at Major Dodge. Okay. Facebook at Major Dodge. Um, it's easy enough. Bomb City Film. At Bomb City Film. Instagram, okay. Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Um, yeah, at Bomb City Film. Very cool. Very yeah. cool. Everybody check it out. Make sure you're following him for everything that he's doing. Any last words that you want to leave for the dad hustlers out there? 
Yeah, just um, last thing, you know, for any any dad out there right now uh, struggling, just know that uh, it'll pass. It'll pass. Stay the course. Stay positive. Yeah. And uh, uh, good things good things will come your way. God rewards good dads. So yeah. that's right. And it is the ultimate gift right here. And mine is thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Peace. You can't stop me. Can you can you guys tell I got some chills right Ow! now? This guy's got me going. <laughs> Come on with it. True dad hustle right here. Real dad hustle. True dad hustle.